hi family welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome i'm oyoko but you can call me v and today is going to be sacred conversations number five i know it's been a while but it takes me some time to prepare and do all the things i need to do so thank you for your patience i have three amazing books in front of me and i'm super thrilled to share um some of the pieces these amazing pieces in these books with you today did that even make sense that sentence anyway it doesn't matter i have <laughs> i have if my body could speak by blaith beard i have sacrament of bodies by romeo oregon and derek Ousu. that reminds me so yeah if you've seen if you have seen my vlog uh, probably now two weeks ago you will know that i bought this book quite last minute um so i'm really excited to share this with you as well and for those who are new sacred conversations is basically me reading poetry so if you are into poetry if you are into prose anything about writing then stick around make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and i think that's it so let me just start let me start this this whole cycle conversations let me start with if my body could speak if my body could speak let's do this so the first one is if my body could speak by blaith beard and she is a poet, a youth educator, an actress, um, US based, and um, her work has been featured in various publications. And I'm really excited because when I found her work, I found it in King's Cross, a bookstore in, King, in King's Cross, um, in the poetry section. And when I grabbed her book, and flicked through it and read a few of her poems, I was instantly convinced that I needed to buy this book. Um, it really grabbed me. So yeah, I'm excited to read, um, read it for you now. So this one is Theories About the Universe. I am trying to see things in perspective. My dog wants a bite of my peanut butter chocolate chip bagel. I know she cannot have this because chocolate makes dogs very sick. Medigan does not understand this. She pouts and wraps herself around my leg like a scarf, trying to convince me to give her just a tiny bit. When I do not give in, she eventually gives up and lays in the corner under the piano, drooping and sad. I hope the universe has my best interest in mind like I have my dog. When I want something with my whole being and the universe withholds it from me, I hope the universe thinks to herself, silly girl, she thinks this is what she wants, but she does not understand how it will hurt. So this one is called Dress Code. Send home. 11 years old, violation of the dress code, skirt, not enough, you, too much. 11 years old, beware of boys, okay, no man. Skirt, not enough, you, too much. Mature prematurely, become woman early. Beware of boys, okay, no man. When you get dressed, think about the message you're trying to send. Mature prematurely, become woman early. Having a body implies public property. When you get dressed, think about the message you're trying to send. The principle measures my hemline, ruler to thigh. Having a body implies public property. How can my body say something I don't? The principle measures my hemline, ruler to thigh. Violation of the dress code. How can my body say something I don't? 
sent home. Okay, so this one is called Eat. When recovery is not all yoga mats and tea and avocados, it is work. It is remembering that sucking on ice cubes does not count as supper. Body, forgive me. It is not healthy to drink so much water that your body becomes a bathtub, your organs float in like loofahs. Body, forgive me. Trying to ignore the caloric calculator in my head is trying to ignore television subtitles and sometimes I just can't. Body, forgive me. Killing yourself slowly is still killing yourself. Wanting to die is not the same as wanting to come home. Recovery is hard work. Not wanting to die is hard work. Every time you asked if I was full, I heard fat. But I am trying so hard not to do that. I am trying not to search for the nutrition label on the back of a birthday candle box. I am trying not to dab my pizza with a napkin. I am trying to stop doing things that don't make any sense. Buddy, forgive me. I am trying. I am trying. I am still trying. So this will be the final poem that I want to read for you and it is titled Yet Another Rape Poem in response to criticism I received for writing too many poems about rape and yeah so this will be the final one. I know you think I talk too much. I know you don't think this is what a pleasant survivor is supposed to sound like. I know you are threatened because I am a thunderstorm of a woman with so much to say. Do you know how long it took for me to say anything at all? Sometimes I worry I write too much about assault. I worry this is too ugly of a burden to talk about. I worry I am putting too much responsibility on you the listener but when I talk about my trauma I am not asking you to carry it or to relieve me from it I am just asking for it not to be too heavy for a conversation these experiences take up so much space inside of me this stage it's the only place I can let this trauma live outside of my body. There is no socially appropriate time or place to talk about rape. I realized this at a party I didn't want to be at, dizzyingly drunk. Someone asks how I'm doing and his name spills from my mouth into a puddle of vomit onto the floor. I apologize and apologize and apologize until the host says, shoot girl, is sorry the only word you know how to say? Suddenly I am the embarrassed girl crying in the bathroom at a party because I made a mistake of speaking about what happened to me at what was supposed to be a happy occasion. I am afraid of wearing my recovery too publicly. I have noticed people only stopped calling me victim and started calling me survivor when I stopped talking about it. Now I have stopped bringing flowers to the grave of a teenager I used to be back when I had orchids in my hair and polka dots on my shoes bubbling over with light. I used to refuse to wear the dress I was assaulted in. I used to imagine it's draped in a sash of caution tape because that dress was the only witness. 
I threw the underwear away. I didn't want to write a statement. I didn't want to file a report. I wanted to take a shower. I wanted to scream. My statement is that I woke up today. My statement is that I stayed here in this body, but every day I find new ways to heal. I wear the dress I was assaulted in, and I don't associate it with him just to remind myself he does not own a single fucking part of me. I found a way to heal through the poetry. This stage is the only place I could tell my story where it wasn't a liability I was putting onto anyone. This stage is where I learned to stop hoarding my suffering. And I could give a fuck about a slam score. This is me healing. This is me reclaiming ownership over my body. This is the only place I have control over the narrative where he cannot interrupt me. Even though trauma has a way of becoming the wallpaper of my head, watch me drag art out of myself. Watch me plant seeds down my spine and bloom into a garden of poetry. From every horrible thing that has ever happened to me, all the nights my voice turned to cement and I couldn't say anything. Watch me build an empire from the ashes of everything that tried to destroy me. So this was If My Body Could Speak. I loved it so much. Um, it takes courage to be dishonest and to open yourself up and to you know, have the tools to translate that onto paper and still move people. It's, yeah, it's truly amazing. I love it so much. People really need to hear these messages. And it's unfortunate that people have to go through these, you know, sh yeah, to have to go through shit, you know, basically, um, in regards to assault and, you know, other heavy topics that um, she spoke about in this book. It's empowering. It is um, inspiring and yeah, I'm really happy that I managed to read this for you. So thank you so much for allowing me to read this and let's go to the next one. Next one is Derek Ousu and he is a award-winning writer, poet, podcaster um, from North London. And I didn't know about him actually. I went to another bookshop <laughs> and I found his work that reminds me um, in the bookshelf. I think it was in a vlog that I put out probably now two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. If you haven't seen that vlog yet, then go and check it out. But anyway, I went to the bookshop and found his book and read a few pieces and I was instantly you know, sold because his work is just so, so descriptive. I I felt I was reading it and I felt like I was watching everything unfold in front of me. That's how, it, that's how his writing has like touched my imagination, I guess. So I'll be reading some of his pieces for you now. So let me see what is going to happen. I actually want to read the author's note first um because when i read that i was like okay this is going to be this is going to be interesting so it's a, a mini a mini paragraph there um but when i read this i was like okay let's see if i'm going to relate or resonate with um with k you know the the, the story of k let's see if i'm going to resonate with this person Okay, so this is the author's note. This is the story of Kay. If you believe your life to be as fictitious as Kay's, 
if you find yourself within the pages of this book, then you are holding the pen, not me. I felt some kind of rush through my through my body, like chills. I was, I was like, okay, wait, let me. This is this is the, like literally. I'm starting when I when I picked up this book, like when I bought it and I got home and I sat down and I you know I was ready to read, and I read that. I was like, ooh, ooh. I'm gonna feel this penetrate my core penetrate my core my feelings everything because if this is already giving me chills this is already giving me chills just a note is giving me chills okay <laughs> okay <laughs> let's buckle up <laughs> i watch a little black boy standing outside a shop pretending not to be bothered by his white friends inside spending money. I walk over and give him a two pound coin and remind him to eat whatever he buys before he gets home. My mum wouldn't approve, so I know his mum wouldn't either. Wide, his eyes look like mine and I fall in love with how grateful everything about him becomes. Safe man, he says. He smells like cocoa butter and dax and I follow his scent up to the door and watch as he stands in front of the colorful sugars with snappy names. I know he's savoring being spoiled for choice. I'm sure when he takes a bite of whatever he buys, I too will be satisfied. And a memory comes back to me of the first time I held a pound coin given to me by a stranger who smelled like cigarettes and blue magic. I love this. I love this part. Really cool. A boat party on the Thames is the first time Miss Harry speaks to me. There was purposeful avoidance in the way she walked around me in class, collecting other students' work with small talk but acting in a daze when she lifted my sheets. During an assembly, where she sank too comfortably into her seat, she rose to reveal a pink thong above her curved concealing trousers. The laughter, I thought, was forced to dissolve the embarrassment. But me, I didn't laugh. I just looked at her and she looked back. Now I'm leaning over the sea, watching its foaming. Soapy so fish stay fresh reflecting the corner of the sky where the moon is bubble wrapped in darkness to protect it from poets. Miss Harry walks over and asks why I'm out here alone. And I answer with the truth that I was hoping sympathy would compel feet heading for another dance to walk out into the fresh air and let me dream I had a chance. Miss Harry says anyone will be lucky. My left arm goes numb. She's staring at me to see what she's done. Thank you, miss, I say. I bring back structure, the scaffolding of the school, the respect in my posture. She looks over the edge of the boat, focusing on the split in the sea, thinking it must be satisfaction these dark bodies of water receive. A smile and she walks away. A secret pressed tightly within her gate. Once out of sight, I turn back to the distance. The wind whistles with my pining. A soft sound above water. A symphony without ray. A heart pierced without pity. This one was so cool, was so nice. This one was so nice. I'm a regular at my brother's school. The sight of me always draws an embarrassment but proud smile across his face. All the brothers emanate power but bring infancy into focus. We're watched as we walk out and I know tomorrow he'll be asked for the 10th time, is that guy your brother? <laughs> 
He's one step away from a sprint, struggling to keep pace with me as we walk home, neither of us talking, but enjoying being seen together. Me looking after him and him feeling like my equal. We're stepping into the house before he asks what's for dinner. He can smell the rice, but wants to be wrong. I want to be wrong. The corned beef stew on my tongue becoming the taste of peri peri chicken. Go and get changed and I'll dish you your rice. He takes his time and sits on the edge of the sofa, knees ready to hold the plate, tray and rice. I bring in the Nando's and again, there's that smile, embarrassed but proud. This is so heartwarming, ah, it's so heartwarming. I love hearing these relationships with like between siblings. Yeah, it's really lovely, really lovely. An atheist in crowds, talkative, lyrical without conviction, discussions taking on the frayed edges of an intelligent conversation. As I walk home, doubting each step before I make it, I am agnostic. Before I close my eyes to sleep, I am a Christian. When I wake, pulled from the pool still reflecting the penumbra, I am spiritual. I am thankful. But I speak to myself until I step out again onto shaky ground, cracked pavements, slabs broken in half with my step across their severance. So this was That Reminds Me by Owusu, no, by Derek Owusu. That Reminds Me by Derek Owusu. So let's go to the next one and the last one. Let's do it. The final book is Sacrament of Bodies by Romeo Oregon, a Nigerian award-winning writer, essayist, poet. And I think this book um, was published last year. So it's like, you know, kind of fresh, you know, new. And this book got recommended to me um, based on my previous readings and I am so, so grateful that I managed to get my hands on this book. It is beautiful. It is horrifying, very sad in ways, um, but very, you know, very poetic. Even the picture, look at this. This is beautiful. I love this. So beautiful the mask as well revealing oneself okay let's just start the first rule of survival is to run i tell you this so you understand how memories of floods drowning a lonely man how the sight of a man burning in a park stays with you his voice becoming yours at night there's no boy hiding in my throat. I tell you the truth. My mouth is clean, but on my tongue are cities where boys are beaten to death. Say Lagos, say Onitsa, say Lafia, say cities where the only freedom for a man who loves another man is to leave. I tell you this so you understand my silence. Understand why I crawled into my voice. I do not want to die. There's nowhere safe in the city of mine and songs of freedom are just what they are. You have to see nails drawing blood from a swollen head before you understand why God turned his face from Christ and whispered, run. This is before you leave. Tell me about the dream where God stole you from your bed. About the boy who wrote faggot under your name. About your mama writing dead on your favorite picture about your street rising up in a wave to pound you into dust. 
Tell me about the fear you hide under your oversized t-shirt. You do not talk even when we sit in darkness on the pier and watch as fishermen pull out grief in the bodies of fishes. Under moonlight, your skin cracks into the finest black. And I want to tell you how sadness makes us lost and visible. You remain silent even when comets drop into water. And I know you are thinking about being outed on Twitter, about your house, buzzing with the word forbidden, about the holy water waiting to chase out the spirits singing under your skin. You want to drink out of my happiness and I'm happy to share. But there's this fear I hide in music. When the radio plays a song filled with darkness, I want to lie in its mouth and get lost. The tide is going out, your head on my shoulder. I know you must leave because home has become a place that eats the bones of young boys. So I switched on uh, some lights because it's just getting darker and I prefer having a bit more light in the video. So this will be the final one, maybe, but yeah, for now, this will be the final one. And this one is titled Denial. In the dark, my lover with a halo offered his skin to me and said, eat. At night, everything becomes a dream, becomes real, becomes a dish. The skin of a lover is a fish baked with olives in my mouth, you multiply. When I was little, my playmates washed their fears into my soul and giggled. There was no shame lying under my shirt as I carried their stories into the eye of the sun. Lover, I know tomorrow you will hide from me as I walk across your shadow. Do not try to explain. I dreamt there's always a beach waiting for the souls of slain lovers. It is a fact that we are born free before tasting the fall of man. When the sun is high, there's a thousand men waiting to mock my loneliness with pictures of death. Tell me, what passes your lips as a mob lynches my body into? I want to remember you as I fall out of your mouth. But my song reminds me of how you betrayed me. Thrice in a room filled with angry men. There's a part of me willing to forgive. But unlike Christ, I can't find my voice. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thank you to the writers for allowing me to read your work. I'm very thankful, I'm very grateful. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. And feel free to share it with people that are into poetry, are into spoken words and all that good stuff. So let's do this. I'm gonna end it here because the lighting and the darkness is you know bothering me <laughs> and the quality is not helping as well so i'm gonna end it here so i hope you are well i hope you go well i hope you stay well and i will see you in the next video Deuces.